actually the intentions of a CEO running ExxonMobil, the, the sort of the scary thing to realize is not that the people running ExxonMobil have evil, nefarious intentions, but actually that they have good intentions. <laughs> they actually have convinced themselves that they're doing good for the world. <laughs> because, hey, you know, they're doing the necessary um, work of exploring and mining out uh, natural gas and and oil around the world and selling it to people so that you can pump your, you know, some mother can pump her uh, her car full of gas and drive her little sick child to the doctor and save his life when he has an asthma attack. And if he didn't have the gas in the, if she didn't have the gas in the gas tank that morning to drive her son to the hospital, he would have died. And so from the point of view of the ExxonMobil CEO, the way he thinks about it might be something like, you know, how many children did I save today by pumping out all of that crude oil from the Middle East or wherever, from the Arctic? How many children were saved because that oil lubricated the machinery that runs modern society? from airplanes to cars to factories to electricity generators. There are people right now in a hospital near you who are on life support. They would die without the life support systems and the life, those life support systems are run by electricity from uh, you know, crude oil generators. But you in your myopia, when you create this us versus them mentality of like the populace versus the elite, the, the, the evil elite corporations and so forth, you don't see all of the profound infinite interconnections of these complex systems. All you see is that ExxonMobil is pumping in, pumping gas, you know, uh, emissions into the atmosphere and, the, you know, they're drilling in the Arctic and so, and they're lobbying Congress and they're, you know, corrupt and all this. This is what you see. So from your point of view, they really, ExxonMobil really looks evil. But if you actually saw the full picture, what would happen is that you realize that they're not evil. They are behaving in the highest good that they know how from their vantage point, given their finite capabilities, just like you are. The only difference is that you're not close enough to ExxonMobil to actually see all of that infinite interconnected web of goodness that results from their activity. Whereas you are close enough to yourself to see your own innate goodness flowering through you in your life. So there's actually sort of a, an additional mind fuck that comes from this. It's sort of a mind fuck within a mind fuck. So at first you start to see how, just how selfish you are and you might start to feel bad about yourself because you realize how much you've been fooling yourself with how good you are relative to other people. But then when you go even deeper and you have some really deep spiritual awakening and you really see the infinite interconnectedness of all of these systems, what you actually realize is that the entire universe what it's doing is it's manifesting maximum goodness through every individual finite incarnation of itself. Such that actually all of the selfish stuff you do that even you don't like about yourself, all the lying and cheating and manipulating and stealing and what other, other nasty things you've been doing, all the collateral damage you've caused, what you ultimately realize is that all of that collateral damage is necessary because you're just a finite aspect of the universe and that your own finitude can't help but act in finite manner and be selfish in the way that it is. Because if you weren't selfish, you couldn't be alive. And so at first it might seem like I'm chastising you for being so selfish. But then you go deeper into this realization and you realize that actually <laughs> there's no there's no chastising, there's no guilt to be had about this. You're selfish because you're a finite manifestation of the universe. And so is ExxonMobil. 
and so is the guy in the Taliban in Afghanistan, and so is the president of the United States, and so is the president of China, and so are the communists, and so are the capitalists, and so are the Jews, and so are the Muslims, and so are the Christians, and so are the, uh, the scientists, and so is everybody. You realize that actually every living being in the universe is literally a manifestation of the universe's love and goodness, which is an absolute, but absolute goodness and love will always get corrupted and will always be less than infinite when they are squeezed through a finite hole. Imagine sort of like, um, you know those old, I don't know if they still make them, Play-Doh um, machines where you got the Play-Doh that you play with, you know, like clay, and then um, they had this sort of extruder machine. You would, you would pump the clay in the top and then you would push this sort of lever and then you would have like a little template at the, on the bottom and you can kind of move it and it would have different shapes. You would have like a circle, a square, a star, a crescent moon shape. And then depending on which one you select, it'll push the, the, the Play-Doh and clay through that hole and make that kind of sort of extrusion, that shape. So this is exactly what the universe is doing. Infinite love and goodness in its purest absolute form has no form at all. It's completely formless. We might say it's like a, a giant lump of formless clay. Then... If you want to manifest it as a particular form, whatever the form is, it doesn't matter. That form is going to be finite. So you extrude it through this shape. Let's say you select a square and you push it through there. As you push it through, it's going to, it's going to take on the finite dimensions and characteristics of what it means to be a square or a crescent moon or a star. And then it comes out and then it looks like what it looks like. It's no longer the infinite lump that it used to be. And therefore, you might say that its love and its goodness is diminished. It's made finite in that process. And so every human being is like one of those shapes. And then universal consciousness is being pumped through that human being, through that conscious agent, to produce some specific set of actions, behaviors, beliefs, attitudes, goals, ambitions, intentions. And so goodness is infusing the actions of every agent on the planet. But some of these shapes can be larger or smaller than other shapes. Some of these shapes are very twisted and corrupted shapes, and other shapes are, are less so. They're more holistic. And so the net effect of all of that is that when you take absolute good intention and love and you pump it through a very corrupt shape, what you get is a very corrupted form of love.